أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وبين استعين والله خير الناصر ومعين Welcome back and um, just before <coughs> the break we were talking about um, changing oneself, changing the community, changing our soul and we explained how uh, the stages of uh, contemplation, the, the stages of changing oneself but carrying on the topic Allah has given us the book of guidance Allah has given us the true and the most purest people who um, are on earth or who used to be on earth and inshallah inshallah when the Imam of our time Imam Zaman Ajallah Faraj Sharif uh, reappears and Allah uh, inshallah reappear his hastens and um, then the justice then the adl then the um, honor of being a real true human being will undergo but once we change or once we um, alter our lifestyle into being good that's when we can change and we have to be focused upon our actions we cannot be disconnected or uh, be disun uh, disunited with one another so that we change ourselves no because we want to change ourselves so that we change other people too we cannot change ourselves only and we stay selfi selfish and then uh, we don't um, change other people no we want to change ourselves so that we change other people so that the community becomes better so that we are united with one another so that we are connected with one another this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants so that you become happy and so that you live a better life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not test those who do he does not love Allah tests those who he loves and ultimately if your test is to uh, prove how strong your iman is because we have many ahadith we have many narrations from the a'imma we have many stories uh, about the prophets the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which they were tested and there were trials in their lives that they we cannot face right now but the a'imma the prophets uh, used to face these where in which um, we see the stories of uh, Imam Ali al-Islam the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hazrat uh, Ayyub, uh, Hazrat Yusuf, um, Hazrat Yunus we see many uh, tests and trials that Allah placed upon them and all of their all of them the messengers of Allah the infallibles came out victorious this is to show us this is to show uh, the later community the later mankind that a human being can do it can do the impossible if you think that whatever you have done in your life whatever sin that you have done Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you no that is the wrong mentality that you have Allah can forgive every sin that you have performed every sin of act that you have acted so in surah al in surah al ankabut Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ah, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim ahasab an-nas an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun if you be uh, if you say that you believe but then later on you do something else for example if i say i'm a muslim but i don't perform the actions of a muslim then how can i be a muslim so the people allah explains in this verse that people say on the day of judgment people will say that i was a believer i was a muslim i was a true obedient of allah but later on they will find out in their book of deeds it's empty Sometimes it's going to be um, um, actions that you have performed but are given to other people because you have done that action badly. For example, if you have good actions and then later on you have backbited about a person, all your goodness will go to that person. So when you say in this verse it says that we are believers, we believe, oh Allah, we believed in you. But when you performed actions that were against Allah, how can Allah say that you believed in me? But then you were doing something against me. Realizing, it's all about realization, it's all about the manifestation of your heart. Bring your heart to the level of certainty, bring your, bring your heart to the level of piety. So when your, when your heart, when your soul 
becomes pure, becomes pious, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you success in life. Success in this life and success in the hereafter. So when we say to Allah on the day of judgment that, Oh Allah, we believed in you. Oh Allah, we obeyed you. Allah will say, yes, this, this is your book of a'mal. This is your book of deeds. You did perform well. You did honor me and you did obey me. We don't want to say to Allah, Oh Allah, we believed in you, but on the day of judgment, the book of a'mal opened and your bad deeds are more heavier than your good deeds. No. This is not what, what we want Because sin is something that At least At least when you sin Or when you perform a bad action Repent straight away Don't go back to that In theory we all know That Something which is wrong Is forbidden Something which, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Has told you not to go towards In theory we all know We all know that is wrong Allah has made limits, Allah has made boundaries, Allah has made something compulsory for you to do and something that is forbidden for you not to do. So when you go towards a compulsory act, Allah is happy with you. When you go towards something is forbidden, Allah is not happy with you and He dislikes them actions. But when you go against these actions, try and try and try, do your best to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Whatever you have done, whatever you have done in your life, don't carry on, walk away from it because Allah has given you hope, Allah has given you a future. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran does say, وَالَّذِينَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ Mean that whatever you have done in your life, whatever actions, whatever sin, that you have committed in your life or previously you have done ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and Allah will forgive your actions those who commit sins, those who commit gunah, those who commit or go against or reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will Allah gives those gives those opportunity as the Quran says Wallahu yuhibbu tawabin Allah loves those who repent, Allah loves those who ask for forgiveness Everyone, everyone is prone to sin But we should know the reality of what we are doing in life We should know that Allah has placed us on this life So that we attain taqwa, so that we become better human beings Allah has given you many opportunities, has given you salat So that you pray five times a day, you remember Allah at least five times a day He has given you supplications So that you supplicate to Allah He has given you A'imma alayhi musalam The infallible So that you can intercede You can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Through the A'imma alayhi musalam Many opportunities arise But they go like clouds Many have lived this, this world And have passed away But for those who say that it is late, for those who say that it is not our time, for those who say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive us or have lost hope, and Allah is the one that gives hope, and Allah is the one who strengthens your uh, souls and you strengthens your iman, because whenever, whenever we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, whenever we pray to Allah for guidance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us guidance. For those who say that we pray to Allah, we pray to Allah day and night, our supplications are not accepted. There is a very, very good reason for that. And Allah has given us the, the concept, of, concept of prayer, the concept of dua, the concept of supplication. Why? Because it's not only and only in that exact time that Allah will give you everything. For example, if you have prayed for Allah to give you uh, guidance to give you piety, to give you taqwa, to give you certainty, to give you um, uh, yaqeen it will not come to you automatically, it will not come to you then, then Allah has given you many choices in life, when you take the right choices to go towards that goal, then you will attain that level, you cannot be sitting around holding a book and imagine and, and, and 
for that book to um, uh, dissolve within yourself. No. Some people try to memorize the Quran by holding the Quran. No, it's not going to just go inside your head. No, you will not memorize it. Then you have to try. You have to try your best. You have to um, sweat it out. You have to tr- work hard to, towards memorizing, towards reading the Quran, towards memorizing. When you memorize the Quran, at first it's quite hard. As the stages in the stages of memorizing the Quran are very hard, very tough. But once you become victorious, once you have attained that level, once you have, once you become a hafiz, you will know the pleasures, the lust of reading the Quran, the lust of memorizing, the lust of just looking at the words of the Quran. So everything will come in stages. You will accomplish the first step, then the second step, then the third step. Then you will go further and further, and further until you become your soul will become strong. Your iman will become pure and strong. So, when the concept of prayer comes about, prayer is something that you t- talk directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no other worship better than salat because there is a hadith stating that if your salat is accepted, all your other worship is accepted. If your salat is not accepted, no other worship is accepted because a human being's ibadah, a human being's worship is dependent on its salat. And when your salat is with a uh, total focus in Allah, because we are talking directly to Allah, we are saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Subhan Rabbi Al A'la, Subhan Rabbi Al Azim. We are saying all these things in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are talking directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are performing our sujood, we are performing our ruku', we are performing our uh, standing up. So when we perform these things only and only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because there is no one in front of us, we are not praying for someone else, we are praying qurbatan illallah, meaning that we are praying to the oneness of God, we are praying towards tawheed, we are praying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we perform these actions, when we perform salat, when we perform supplications, we know that there is Allah. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening to our prayer. We know that whenever we pray, He is looking at us. He will, he, uh, ultimately, He will be the decider of your worship. And when your worship is from clear intention, when your worship is with pure intention, then there is no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept it. He will accept it and He will also reward you for that. You will be rewarded in this life and inshallah will be rewarded in the hereafter. Supplications are there for you to help, are there to help you cross the bridge. Supplication, ultimately you will have to do everything yourself. You will have to work hard to regain or gain the status what Allah wants, the Tawheed. You should understand the oneness of God. And in order to st- in order to understand the oneness of God, you have to know everything under the oneness of God. You have to know that Allah is beneficent, Allah is merciful, Allah is compassionate. Why is He compassionate? Why is He merciful? Because Allah is the one who gives everything. Allah is the one who gives you blessing. Allah is the creator. Allah has created the worlds. Allah has created human beings. Allah has created everything that you see around you. Everything, every living thing praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that you see, everything that you hear, everything which is living, it's praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why do human beings, when they think that they have reached a level in this materialistic life that they cannot stop and think that Allah has given them that status Allah has given them Allah has blessed them with that status yes whenever you have reached or whenever you have for example uh, reached a level in your life for example became a medical student become a, an engineer for example or become um, uh, a surgeon that is, the, that is the help of Allah, that is the help of supplications, that is the help of friends, family, that you have reached that. Allah has given you the opportunity in your life so that you have reached that status. If you did not work hard for that, if you did not do anything 
for that then you wouldn't have realized and you wouldn't have achieved that status but you have worked hard you have done everything you did everything according to what needed to be done in this life that's why you re re reach that level in the same way in the same way allah has given us the quran allah has given the uh, uh, given us infallibles allah has given you uh, righteous people in this life so that you attain goodness you become you make your soul you make your heart pure in order whenever we go to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because kullu nafsin zaikatul maut every living person will taste death so we do we we cannot be on this earth we we we, we know we have to come to that realization that we will die one day and we will leave this world with this world you will not take your body with you you will take your soul with you and once your soul is strong once your iman is strong that's when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you jannah will grant you goodness in the hereafter but for those who have sinned for those who have committed uh, guna for those who have committed um, uh, acts against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala try um, your utmost best to realize that you have done wrong try your best to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you try and realize that Allah is there for you try and realize that you have hope try and realize that you have to have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you have faith in Allah that's when you become an obedient servant that's when you become someone that you weren't before that's when you become a different person that's when your soul is pure that's when your soul uh, is mm, integrated with goodness with good deeds so that once you change yourself once you change yourself you change for the good you change other people your actions speak louder than words whatever you say might not be whatever you do but when you do a good action other people will learn from it other people will be uh, focused upon your actions and if we if for example you have done a bad thing in front of uh, a bad action in front of uh, a child that child might learn if you do something good in front of that child that child will learn in the same way they say that pray in front of young people pray in front of youngsters why until they reach that level where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made compulsory pray compulsory for them they will automatically they will automatically say oh it's the time of prayer or oh, this is how you pray oh my father used to pray like this or oh, my friends used to pray like this yes this is a goodness of teaching your kids or teaching your youth the goodness of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inshallah uh, for the um, future programs we will discuss further on different topics and we will discuss um, into um, depth the issues about what we need to be learning in this life and also realizing that this materialistic life is limited and um, we will um, depart from this life whatever we have in this life will be left behind only the only thing that will go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be our souls and inshallah we make our souls pure for the future and hereafter we end this program with the recitation of dua imam zamana bismillahir rahmanir rahim allahumma kun li waliyika al hujjat ibn al hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abai في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقاعدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين